What is up YouTube and welcome back to another episode of Oxygen Not Included Season 3. Straight in with the mod update. This one is, as I said, temperature filter. So now the sweeper is only picking up based on a temperature. And that temperature is set to a maximum of 60. That is still a bit warm, technically. Because we don't want the base getting above 30. So you wouldn't really put anything above 30. But just for now... We'll, we'll try it out and see how it goes. We can always put a cooling system in the base should we need to. Now up there in the top left hand corner on the iron volcano you can see a piece of iron that is not being picked up because it's 1100 degrees. Until that cools down to 60 it will not be picked up. So that is a nice simple crisis averted for that. We can use it elsewhere as well and in future I don't think I'm ever going to play this game without that mod. Temperature regulation is very difficult especially when you have a secluded base that you then rip out the world so that's why moving forward i think it'll be a very good idea to make sure that everything that you allow into your base is below a certain temperature again realistically you don't want it to be above sort of 30 but there are caveats to it now i am trying to find the end of the asteroid because this asteroid is confirmed to be at least three or four times if not more because i haven't found all the edges larger than your average asteroid and that's part of this map i guess the lab map is that you get much more space i have so much water fluids both uh, polluted oil it, it's insane so it's good fun and i am enjoying this map very much and i would like to do another one of these in the future depending on your thoughts and comments though there aren't many so at the minute i'm just kind of winging it there is a lot of what they're called spores the zombie spore plants that you can see there that just yet I don't want to uncover. I will, of course, be doing that shortly. Uh, obviously speaking over this now, I have gone past the, 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 the part of, of creating those magic robots with the zombie spores and the steel, and they are absolutely fabulous. So it is doable, it do, is possible, so subscribe to keep an eye out for that episode. Right. So I'm going to dig out all of this up to the Abyssalite. The Abyssalite is the end of the world asteroid. Or at least it is on the basis that behind it is a lot of lava. Magma. Magma. It's not moving, so it's magma. So what we need to do is uncover that. As soon as a duplicate goes sort of over there to that side of the map, it will uncover a lot more. We'll see a lot more. But that side basically is... A lava wall the bottom just goes into a dead end of the neo dinium whatever that stuff's called um, and specifically it makes it so that we can well we can't sorry get any further because that's indestructible let's just zoom ahead and see what they can do with this area i want to try and get it to at least the abyssalite whether that will be a time lapse is depending on how quick they are or i might just um jump ahead and save you having to wait let's see And yes, as is always what I seem to do is I do turn off the Atmos suits to do things like that because it's just too slow with the Atmos suits on. It did take a while. Um, I did skip that last little bit because they decided to have a nap and do a few bits and bobs. But you can see we are at that border now. So that boundary between the Abyssalite and the Magma. Obviously the Abyssalite will keep them temperatures well away from us. Whether we use that Magma for something, I am not entirely sure. The heat would be a mega, mega source of electricity, but it's also complicated because it's so hot. Unless we can get some end game metals that can withstand better temperatures. In the meantime, of course, all of the oil reservoir, oil mine, whatever they're supposed to be, oil volcano things that were there, I have indeed moved again. 
uh, EU survey and then move. <clears throat> now, the way I built this to start with is a bit complicated. I forgot how it actually works. So I know that the, the duplicate has to come and release the pressure. That's pretty simple. Um, powering them up is also simple because I'm just using the megawatt wire. I know it's not the right way to do it. You should keep it on a transformer. But to be honest, things like this that need to be just going forever. Using a transformer that throws out even more heat just seems unnecessary. Especially if you're going to have enough power on this power line. Which we of course are because it's all free power based on the heat. And of course we're going to be creating even more heat when we get these up and running. So that the heat that they generate will power them in theory is... Well, that is the theory. Now, when you use the reservoirs and you put the reservoir on top of the oil and it, and it works, what you find happens is the oil actually comes out and falls down. So you need like a, a hole underneath for it to fall into. You also get a lot of natural gas, so a way to collect that. And we need a call-in system, call-in loop. Now, medipacks. We are getting close now to the zombie spores. I want to make sure that we have medipacks made. All they require is uh, a balm lily flower and phosphorus, it looks like. Nice and simple. Obviously, the vials, which are the things that you use for the zombie spores specifically, they require the sun bug. Sun bug eggs. Or, I think, yeah, the eggs. Yeah, you don't have to touch them out. So just making sure that the hospitals that we do have and that we built a few episodes back are kitted out to make sure we don't lose any more duplicates. I think we're only at two so far still throughout this this series and that's due to suffocation more than anything. So a few more upgrades coming in, specifically and more importantly the freezers instead of the refrigerators. So the freezers hold the gods permanently without losing any freshness also stop things from going stale the refrigerators work in that they slow it down they don't stop it so the freezers will now the downside to the freezers is their storage capacity is uh well pants crap rubbish wherever you're from depending on what you depict the word to be um but the idea is I'm going to store the majority of the food, the cooked food, the prepared food in the freezers and then when they're full anything that backs up will go into refrigerators and the like. You can filter out uh, staleness and things like that but I'm not that bothered. The mood is way, way higher than it needs to be based on all of the rooms and other things that we have in place. So a debuff of one for stale food isn't my concern. They do require a decent amount of power, though. That's what I'm right, uh, w wondering. I'm not wondering this at all. I know it. That's what I'm finding out. Now, the whole electric grid, not s the spine. The spine is bang on exactly where it needs to be and is working as intended. But the actual cables that come from it are a uh, rat's nest. So I am going to rip that out and try and put them floor by floor like I always do. I will do that off camera though. Uh, if anybody wants to see that really boring monotonous thing, then let me know. But I can't imagine anybody is going to waste their time commenting on something like that. It's very boring. I have to rip them all out. Which means a lot of people are going to have problems with various different things and moaning and bitching about stuff. Um, try and do it in sections, but usually what I try and do is just do it on a level 10. Because I've got the mod that allows me to do chain deconstruction, it does mean that I can rip out the cables pretty quickly. It's just building them that's not so quick. But luckily, because again, because you've ripped them out, there's the copper and the, the metal that you're using for the cables all over the place. They don't have to travel too far to put them in. So if you do it all as a level 10, you usually find it's pretty quick. Do it on a deconstruction, mass deconstruction, as soon as they pull the trigger, which most of it should get broke in one. You can actually cheese it by connecting wires together before you do it so that you basically get everything in one go. Then, uh, just get everybody on putting that back together again. Okay, so just bring some water over for the oil reservoirs. Of course, they need clean water. It does specify clean water as opposed to water, which is clean water, right? It normally specifies water or polluted water. Uh, but for some reason, it says clean water, which is which is very specific. Anyway, 
they, they require that to work um, and then obviously from there you just basically get infinite oil now at this stage when we've got these this is where I will open up a way of turning this oil into petroleum so that we can start looking at that in terms of engines and anything else that requires it maybe even generators depending on how much it produces the plastic set up there that you can see above that is turning into petroleum and then into plastic I'm gonna leave that alone and see plastic wise what's that 40 tons so we've got plenty of plastic we do have the Dreco still I could get rid of them they're really not required anymore but we started with huge massive ranching farms and I'm going to end with huge massive ranching farms unless this catastrophe and I lose the whole population as long as we always have one standard Dreco though I'll be able to get the glossy Drecos back and fix that now as is the case with everything we're doing in this series I am using the thermostat generators as coolers and it is working well it's not a perfect solution of course, there is some math to do, and I'm not doing it. I'm making it up as, as I go along. The idea here is that the liquids, because it's definitely better to use a liquid for stuff where it gets as hot as these, the liquid is going to come past the oil reservoirs, which will take away a lot of heat, because there is a lot of heat coming out of there. Over these generators, the generators will absorb that and eat it into power. The power will then go elsewhere, and the water liquid will go back cooler hopefully keeping the whole process cool and i say hopefully yes it does it does work we know it works we've proven it works it's just how many generators do you require the fact that we're keeping the steel process done although i did overkill that with 15 and it really only needs the science on it is 11 actually uh, for anybody that cares it needs 11 for the steel thing but i've got 15 just because i can the generators won't take it below 10 degrees, so you don't have to worry about it freezing anything. It won't ever get that cold. They, the, the minimum they can run at is 10 degrees. Right, this geyser basin hole storage area, whatever we're calling it, is starting to get a bit out of hand. And that is that we're getting a lot of liquid stored in there. Loads of polluted water, loads of clean water, or well, water, and loads of salt water. So I am going to start pumping that out, getting it filtered, and going to various places. With the amount of liquid we currently have, I am actually going to start looking at setting up an electrolysis setup so that we can use that to provide oxygen for the base. Algae is running out, and it isn't infinite. We can turn slime into algae, of course. Um... But again, that's not sustainable either because you don't have, well, stain. Um, the, the slime will run out. So I'm going to look at electrolysis. Water, of course, runs out. But at the, the, the rate we're going, not any time soon. And we haven't even stolen any from other asteroids yet. So, yeah, we're, we're fine. I will set some automations in the base so that when we get to sort of either one, in, somewhere in between 1.5 and 2 kilos of pressure for that oxygen in the base that the system takes a break because any more than that and well it's unnecessary actually if we just use the standard vents though it can't get higher than that because it'll be over pressured anyway so that'd be interesting i might drop it down to about 1500 though because anything above a kilo is comfortable for them not going to spend too much time on it because we've seen it working before but here you go you can see the heat now is traveling along the pipes as is intended the generator is then kicking in and eating that they will then send back that cool down liquid back into the room and rinse and repeat um, these buildings will all only have people duplicates with atmos suits on anyway so technically there's no reason to do this but keeping everything running cool and getting free power from all this extra heat I don't see as a negative one thing that is clear with stuff like this is you don't want giant gaps. You want to try and keep the liquid moving with a f full pipe. I would normally I like to have like three or four tile squares empty just to give it a back a bit of an extra room. But you can see there going into that room at the top there it was cooling it down immediately. That heat then goes into the liquid. The liquid then goes into generators. Rinse and repeat. Jobs are good. And I'm just going to throw in a little bit of a gap underneath to allow the oil to fall into because I'm not sure how quick it 
producer's oil. And I'm confident that there is at least... I've seen at least two or three more reservoirs that we can tap in the future. So I'm going to make sure to have a setup that works predominantly um, as it is. I'll build it out to the right and rip out the generators and move them elsewhere where we need the space. But for now, we just need somewhere for this oil to go because I'm not going to be processing it just yet. Okay, so I want some bristle berries to be grown, that is. Uh, just random statement there. I want bristle berries and no explanation. To turn into gristle berries. Also to make some more of the end game crops. Now what I'm going to do is use the farm over here. I've got a lot of space. These rooms will never use. There is a couple of rooms above that are spare anyway. So I'm not worried about running out of space for ranchers. You can see my ranchers are actually running out. The reason for that is not because I don't have the eggs. I do. The reason is because I don't have enough incubators to keep up with the eggs before they basically uh, run out and hatch into a fried egg. So we will need to improve that dramatically in the future. That will, and I can I can confirm, spoiler, um, it does in, it fill them back up again. So you can see that there's one shine bug in that room, but I'm pretty sure I've got about 15 shine bug eggs, but I'm only hatching one at a time. And the life expectancy of them isn't long enough that you see them all together in a nice big group, as you would expect. This room is simple. Farm at the bottom that is going to be for the berries to grow. Some lights there hanging down. The room's a little bit bigger than it needs to be, but I'm not throwing out the the pattern that I had. So I'm just using two farm spaces. Below is the room that's creating the oxygen for the Atmo suits, actually. I really should probably get them back in their Atmo suits sometime soon. Um, now, it is working, and I don't want to disrupt that. It needs to only keep oxygen and hydrogen in there. Luckily, they're doing the replace, so they don't actually break a hole in the floor to replace it for the new floor. The downside to this is we're going to have to do something about the temperature because this room is going to be too warm to grow the gristle berries. No, sorry, the bristle berries at the very start. And the light bulbs throw off a lot of heat on their own, about 50 to 60 degrees. And of course, that's way above the maximum for a bristle berry, which is around 27 and a half. And on that subject of the incubators, while we wait for the gristle berries to be grown, bristle berries, keep doing that, bristle berries to be grown, and we ain't got enough seeds to fill the farm up anyway, this is my setup for, well, minus some of them chests, we don't need four chests like that. But you can see there, there is many groups of three of the incubators each egg will have at least three to themselves the whole system is automated anyway now they're going to be draining far more power than i'd like them to um i think there's 18 in total no no there's more than that there's 30 exactly 30 so 30 in total 10 lots of three they're not going to be running all the time. I can't afford that at the minute. So I am going to set them on a automation automatic system, which you've probably seen on YouTube done before. And that is quite simple. You set a timer, a cycle timer, uh, for a couple of hours in the morning. Just enough time for the duplicates to get in there and lullaby. Lullaby and obviously increases the hatch speed by, I think, five times. It's, it's very significant. And then after they've done that, the turn off. They will continue to incubate at the right speed, even if the incubators are turned off, so don't panic. And it just saves you a crap ton of electricity and basically a crap ton of coal. Coal is going down. We are just increasing and increasing and increasing the amount of power we're using. And the hatches are nearly extinct due to us not doing the eggs quick enough. Not incubating the eggs quick enough. Which is the whole reason we're doing this giant new upgrade. Also then the incubation room that's current will just be turned into another farm. We will be getting some more fancy critters coming in. I would like to try pips. There are many morphs of those. We are working towards our first diamond hatchling as well. Uh, as soon as we get our first diamond egg. That's working nicely as well. It's keeping the temperature down around the gases. It's stopping the steam but it's not keeping the liquid cooler. 
that's done other ways but we'll have to look into that now for the next episode we are going to look straight into the incubation room and getting that set up and working and automated but we are at time now so we're not going to be able to do that here thank you very much for watching if you like the video please click like don't forget to subscribe it helps me out and lets you know what else i am doing remember i do multiple games all around survival but this is predominantly the biggest uh, most played game on the channel for now Thank you very much again for watching. Take care. Goodbye.